So, Ollie, we've called out to see your contracting business. Uh, we're chipping in Wiltshire. That's it, yeah. Um, so, it's your own business. Yes. How did you get started? It's always been mad for it, really. I used to help my ground do a lot of hay when I was younger. And uh, started off hedge cutting when I was about 16 with like the farm strapped up. Mm -hmm. And then I bought my first tractor when I was 18, a New Orleans T7030. So I was, uh, yeah, I had that when I was uh, 18, and then, uh, yeah, kind of went from there, really, from from started off hedge cutting to foraging and everything we do now. I was going to say, because it's re you can see how much it's grown over the last however many years, because yeah. you're running a fleet of Fent and John Deere tractors now. Yeah. And so we caught you out yesterday with your uh, 936, which we're in today, and she was on the Bergman dung spreader. That's it, yeah. Um, would that be a big kind of part of your business, the dung spreader? Uh, yeah, it would be a big part. Over the last few years, we would have changed an awful lot in we mainly would have always done autumn spreading, but now we're finding the last few years we're doing a lot more in the spring, top dressing and things like that, because on variable rate and weight sales, everything like that. So uh, yeah, we've been doing more of that. And this year we've actually started probably fairly early mm -hmm. spreading muck. We're pretty much finished now. We've got a few more jobs to do top dressing. But we're spreading today for like maize groundwork, which is what we're plowing now. So we've just started doing that. So sort of just all starting to kick off a bit really. And what made you go down the Bergman route for the spreader? I do a lot of poultry mat, so yeah, we've got the lorries and that, all that. We're shifting sort of 202, 250 tonnes a week poultry mat. Yeah. We sell that and then we haul it with the lorries and the poultry farms. Yeah, then we spread it. So I'm trying to find the spreader that would spread like evenly. And Bergman brought one out on demo and we were pleased with it. And we've had, that's our yeah second one now with the way he sells and all that on. And, yeah, we sort of love it, really. Yeah, it's working well for the business, then. Yeah, yeah it's good. It sort of ties in with everything else, really. Because it's not, obviously, the 936 isn't what's needed to pull it, because obviously out today, I, did, I caught it briefly while it was on one of your 724s. That's it, yeah. Yeah, they'll pull them all right, like, uh, on things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you're, sort of, some of the banks and that we would go on, yeah. like, she'll hold, sort of, 20, roughly, on chicken max, we always about 21. 22 ton. And you were loading her with your Volvo L70? That's it, yeah. And she's obviously one of your babies. Yeah, I would say one of my favourite machines, yeah. I've spent a lot of time doing the pits and that with that. We've had no problems at all with her, really. She'll do that and then, yeah, she'll be loading maize and wood chip through the winter. And a lot of wood chip goes out the yard, as you saw the other day. So, yeah, yeah we use a shovel for that with a big toasted bucket on. So, it's always sort of doing something, really. Yeah, because like you were saying, obviously, you run lorries as well. Yeah. And we caught one of your, well, I think, is it called Bumblebee, am I right? I yeah, want to make probably. sure I get the right name yeah, now. Yeah, sort of got a nickname of Bumblebee, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, she was heading out yesterday with a load of wood chip. That's it, yeah. Because uh, that's obviously another part of your business. Yeah, so I haul a lot of wood chip for biomass boilers. Um, and then I've got a lot of friends that are also contractors, like forestry contractors, mm -hmm. that we haul chip away from, and then we store the chip. And then, yeah, load it out and away it goes to grow, well, heat tomatoes to, to be grown. A lot of poultry units have it for the heat in the sheds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we do, that would be quite a big part of our business now, really. Yeah, because the lorries seem, well, you've got two currently, and I think you're saying you're after investing in another one because they yeah. seem to be on the road constantly. Yeah, we've just got another one coming now. What you were loading in, well, it was yesterday evening, um, it was King Agricultural Services you were working alongside That's with it, the yeah. wood chip. But um, what was really interesting to see, you've gone down the Smith route for your trailers. Yeah. What yes. kind of took you towards the Smith? Michael Birch kindly lent me one to do maize, would have been the season before last, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, we ended up, we bought five Smith trailers. So we got three triaxles with the front and rear steer, and then two, like, 18 tonners or 40 cube. Yeah, non tandems, is it? Yeah just mainly so farmers can pull their own trailers when we're busy. We've got a few customers that like to do that and they probably wouldn't like it if we go with the Supercube <laughs> triaxle one. But like so, how, how have you found the Supercube since kind of change into the triaxles? Because uh, obviously we we yeah. love our Supercube. <laughs> Personally, I absolutely love them. Uh, the lads like them. They tow really smooth. Yeah, like in the winter they're busy hauling wood chip all the time. Yeah. So we're, they would do a lot of miles as well throughout the winter but we'd find them just to be those triaxles you can get them anywhere a tandem or one would yeah. and 
they, I think they're safer. You've got another set of brakes, another axle to carry the weight. We find compaction-wise, they're brilliant. Yeah, they, they've been really good as well for our business. But obviously, the wood chip's not a, a heavy product, mm -hmm. so just having that 50 cube of space is brilliant, really. Yeah. Good for that. Obviously, right now you're ploughing. Yep. Which would, would that be another kind of big side at this kind of time of year for yourselves? Uh, yeah, we do a lot of groundwork for like cultivation work for ploughing for maize. We grow a lot of our own maize to sell, so yeah, we'd be doing a lot of that and a lot of customers yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, we do do a fair share of ploughing. Obviously, we got the lumpkin ploughing today, yeah. which we're usually converting them, but trying the lumpkin out, which we seem to be getting on well with. Yeah. So we're on land today which we're usually in furrow so because of the bigger tractor or the bigger tires we sort of struggle now ploughing in the furrow so kind of want to get away from that bit if we can. And another thing we've got yes because you seem to be very busy over the last couple of days Ollie, uh, you've also had your Abbey tanker out yeah um, she's been spreading slurry on the back of your one of your 6250Rs yeah how do you keep it all done? What's that? <laughs> all, just everything oh, in between well. <laughs> Don't get much sleep, really. Because you, know? <laughs> you also have the dairy farm at home. Yeah, so the dairy farm's like uh, would be like our home base, but sort of separate from like the contracting business. Although we obviously work alongside closely, um, mm. I don't have much to do with the dairy farm, really. In terms <laughs> I, think of cows. I think you've got enough kind yeah, of going on I, here. Uh, personally, the cows. Yeah, the milk price is one of those things where, when someone tells you how much they're going to pay you. When you can't send your own invoice, I always think it's a bit bad, really. So, uh, but yeah, hopefully the milk price comes up. Tipping back to, obviously, you were saying that you, your dung spreading side of the business has picked up a lot more into the spring yeah. time of the year. I, it, do you find that's a lot because of the way that the fertilizer's gone? My phone doesn't stop at the moment with uh, <laughs> people ringing up for poultry muck and, yeah, the fertilizer price is mad now so yeah because your 828 was out spreading fur yeah but. she was doing that today yeah sparingly <laughs> yeah we cut the rate back quite a, a lot this year so yeah that was for first cut grass today so um yeah they've been on doing that at home yeah. what is your backup plan with the way that prices are going these days I, I know all the farmers are getting more money for their milk and the beef's gone up and everything like that but in reality it's not really come up enough to in what everything else has gone up is massive now and uh, yeah I think this season we we supply all the diesel for all of our jobs we would do rather than run on farm diesel um, which I know some people would do so for us you're sort of having to carry a lot more money like cash flow wise mm -hmm. to kind of do the same job you were doing before and earning the same profit out of so 
that side of it uh, doesn't look too fun coming up. But uh, no, especially with the price of everything else. Going yeah, up. that's it. It's a uh, but farming's a big wheel, and once you're on the wheel, crops get planted, they get harvested, and you're fairly lucky that you can pretty much say that in this time next year I'll be mowing grass or planting maize or whichever whereas some businesses wouldn't have that mm -hmm. so they wouldn't know what's coming up no that's it so we are quite lucky in that sense but even still the investment now is massive for the return sometimes you look at it, especially having the lorries now is you look at those and the returns you can make from those compared to maybe standard agriculture contracting is uh, quite a bit different so. and as somebody who started off into the contracting around the age of 18 yeah Obviously, to where you are now, like your business has grown phenomenally. Yeah, massively. Yeah. But do you find that people who would be in the same position as yourself now are gonna, what the way that prices are going? Uh, I'm a great believer of if you wanted to do it, if you want to do it, you if you set your mind to it, you'll be able to do it. You'll definitely come up against some pretty hard times where you'd think, oh no, you will come up against some big challenges, but. If it's something you truly want to do, I think you should always go for it. Farming as a community, they're always quite helpful people and people will support you quite well. Yeah, I think it would definitely be a challenge now today, but I think, uh, yeah, take my hat off to anyone that wants to do it. No, that's an absolutely fair point. But it's been brilliant seeing how you have grown the business over the last couple of days. Like I arrived here not quite knowing the, yeah. the scale of what you do yourselves, which is brilliant. Um, and it's really nice to see how it has progressed for you. Yeah. Um, and it's been lovely to see the good weather, to be honest. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? I know, I think this is the first like, fine few days that I've seen. I think it says it's 19 degrees now. Yeah, it's it has been it. 19 degrees. I said that in the Jeep yeah. earlier. I say Jeep, I'll upset people. I'll say truck. Um, oh, I'll take you, yeah. <laughs> no, but definitely a truck. It's definitely, well, and it, it's a truck, isn't it? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a million for having us out over the last couple of days, Ollie. It'll be nice and, to see you um, back at grass. Or well, yeah, definitely. Want to, come and film want to see the that trailers? V897 Eagle one. Yeah, yeah, she goes quite well. <laughs> exactly. But that's brilliant. And thanks a million for having us out. That's right. Lovely. Thanks to see you.